Hello, I'm Natalie Dormer, and this is 21st Century London. London's rich history can be traced back 2,000 years, but there was one significant event that took place 500 years ago that led to the transformation of England and the world we live in today. Henry VIII was crowned King of England. To celebrate the 500th anniversary of Henry's coronation, Britain pulled out all the stops with special events and exhibitions around a king who transformed England to one of the most powerful nations in Europe. So come with me and let's take a look. Your eminence has built the most beautiful palace here. Probably the finest house in England. I have nothing to compare with it. It is yours. I'm here at Hampton Court Palace on a slightly chilly English summer's day. It was originally built as a private house, but became the home of Thomas Wolsey, who was cardinal in the Catholic Church, and through his political skill and influence, became Lord Chancellor of England. But when Wolsey could not convince the Pope to grant Henry a divorce from his first wife, Queen Catherine, Henry took Hampton Court for himself in 1529. He spent 10 years and 62,000 pounds, 30 million US dollars today, in renovations, making Hampton Court one of the most lavish and modern palaces in Europe at the time. I am joined by Dr. Kent Rawlinson, curator of historic buildings at Hampton Court Palace, to show us around. Well, I think this is the very best place to start because it tells the story of what Hampton Court is for. Because what we're looking at all around us are suites of lodgings for everyone coming to visit Henry VIII at Hampton Court. It's somewhere where Henry brings his court to entertain them. So you come here for sports, you come here for music, you come here for great religious festivals. Hampton Court is a pleasure palace. Welcome to my court. And the river is obviously the highway. It's your main form of transportation. So it was therefore very important to have your palaces along the river. Exactly, so Henry has this whole chain of palaces along the Thames. So you've got Windsor, you've got Richmond, and they're all linked by the river. And so there was even a gatehouse that was on the river so that you would land on your barge and be immediately sort of swept into Henry's private apartments. So tell me where we are now, Kent. We're standing in the great kitchens at Hampton Court. Bigger than mine. <laughs> oh, yeah, certainly much bigger than mine. How many people would these kitchens be providing for? Well, on a normal day, maybe about 500 people, but for a big event, maybe three times that, so 1,500 people. I'm getting the sensation that meat <laughs> was prepared here. This is a huge kitchen, as you said, but this is just for meat. So these huge hearths were where the meat was prepared. You just stack up a huge fire here, it sort of radiates this heat out, and then you have chunks of meat being cooked on these spits and turned. And then they go into things like pies, but they're also served sliced up. Now, let's eat. I'm starving. What a magnificent room. I think this is the most magnificent room, not only in the palace, but of all the um, surviving houses and palaces that Henry built. So it's, it's just the Great Hall. This is the central point in the palace, which becomes the stage upon which the sort of magnificence of Henry's court is played out. It's not only where Henry entertains, but it's also somewhere where you have theatre and drama and court ceremony. It's the heart of the palace. And we have extraordinary colour that comes from the stained glass. The light spilling out here is incredible. And the colour of the tapestries, tell me a bit about those. These tapestries were commissioned by Henry VIII. They're made from gold and silver thread. You so can they... still see the remnants of the gold thread glittering. Well, originally they would just have glowed. So how expensive, how prized are these tapestries now? These were the most valuable thing that Henry owned, and they are still the most um, valuable thing in the Royal Collection after the Crown Jewels, so they couldn't be sort of more important. Kent, I have to admit that I have an overwhelming urge to sit in this chair. Well, you should. There's nothing quite like this, I don't think. Oh, this is rather grand, isn't it? <laughs> so dishes would be brought up with great display up to this top table. If you're sitting here as Henry or his queen, you're basically ruling this entire environment. So everything is focused on you. If you're having a good time, everyone's having a good time. Hungry, ladies. <laughs> so this room is... 
This was Henry's council chamber. This is where Henry met with his council and they debated matters of the state. So in 1530, for example, Henry gathers all his key councillors at Hampton Court to discuss the divorce crisis. The annulment of my marriage must be declared immediately. And it's from those series of debates. Um, letters are first sent to Rome saying that if the Pope doesn't settle the divorce from Catherine of Aragon in the way that Henry is looking for, that Henry will challenge papal authority to even make that ruling. It's in this room those things were being decided. I demand to know whose subjects are you? The Pope's or mine? The Haunted Gallery. Yeah, this is the gallery that sort of basically links the Great Hall to the chapel, which is behind us. And there's a story, which may be true or maybe 19th century, that when Catherine Howard's infidelity was revealed to the king, which happened here at Hampton Court, she was put under house arrest. My lady, you are confined to your apartments for as long as it pleased the king. The story goes that she manages to escape from her apartment and that she sort of then ran down to get to Henry in the chapel. Screaming at the top of yeah. her voice, don't kill me, Henry. <laughs> Often with Henry, if you can get to Henry, you can change his mind. If you can't, then other people will tell him what they want him to hear. So this garden is something that Hampton Court has done specifically for the anniversary. It's the first time at Hampton Court that we've recreated a garden of the kind that Henry would have known himself. I have other ideas for the palace. I'll construct beautiful gardens full of groves, hidden delves, paths. Tell me about these beasts. They're heraldic beasts, so they each refer to the English monarchy, so they're the beasts that hold up the royal shield, or they're beasts that represent one of Henry's sort of wives or ancestors. So this one here, for example, is Anne Boleyn's white falcon, so it's her personal emblem. And then we've got the panther, or sort of leopard, which is Jane Seymour's heraldic beast. And he has the most amazing blue and red spots. I think he's just remarkable. People will say there once existed a great palace and King Henry built it. Everything, including this garden, says, I belong to Henry, I was made by Henry, you're sort of in I'm my powerful, world. I'm yeah. great. And yeah, when you come to Hampton Court, you're sort of sucked into Henry's world. So there's nothing that you do, nothing that you're given, nothing that you experience that's not controlled by him. So you're at his pleasure. Come, let us celebrate. <laughs>